If you're looking for a high school physics program that is not textbook based, has lots of variety, and is math free, I may have just the answer for you. If you're unfamiliar with Guest Hello, they are a mom and pop company who produces literature based curriculum across the grades and across all the subjects. You purchase the lesson plans from them, and then on your own, you'll need to purchase the books and the supplies, and we'll get into that here in a bit. The program itself is $35 for the physics. And then again, like I said, plus the books and your supplies. The books, I will not lie, can get really spendy. And I give some ideas for saving money on specifically Guest Hollow, but any literature-based curriculum in the video up there. So I definitely suggest you hop over there and check out the ideas, but they include things like Guest Hollow's Facebook groups, that are active in selling curriculum, especially in the spring as parents start wrapping up for this, for that school year. Your student should, as they should about for most other core classes, expect to spend about an hour a day on this. For Ben, it really varied from day to day how much time he would spend. Some days he would end up spending a couple of hours, other days 30 minutes. It really just depended on on what he chose to do because for us I didn't give him the daily schedule I gave him give him blocks and let him figure out his pacing for the week I'm not going to do a flip through at the end of this video like I usually do because I did already take you inside it when I did the first impressions video but when you purchase guest hollow you get a pdf version and a word doc version in the beginning of them is the parents guide information and then it's the daily schedule. Now, the thing you need to know about Guest Hollow, their physics and in, and the other ones, at least for science, I've never used their any other subjects. There is so many choices every day. You are not expected to do it all. As they like to say, it's a buffet. Take what you want, skip what you want. There are some books every day that are ranked either one or two in their guide. The one and twos are considered your spines. The other ones are optional. There are also activities and videos, usually short videos on YouTube. There are a few longer documentaries like Nova and such, but for the most part, their videos are short. In a week, you might have anywhere between like five and 10 of those videos, but again, pick and choose what you want. I noticed, especially with the physics that there were often um, like two different series of videos that illustrated the same thing, but they were just two different approaches to it. We picked one and mostly did that one and then marked off the other ones, for example. So when you look at their samples or my first impressions video, or if you buy it, you're going to see a lot. Do not be overwhelmed by it because they really want you to just pick and choose what works for you. The way I've done it each year is that we, st I start for the first couple of weeks and mark, you know, decide what we're going to use, what we're not going to use. And from there, I get a sense of how quickly it's going to progress, which style of videos he likes, which he doesn't. And then I can do the rest of the year. But again, I usually only do like six weeks at a time so that I can adjust as needed. So my biggest, or one of my suggestions for you is not to go through and do the entire year at the beginning because you never know what, what your student might latch on to, what might move quicker, slower, et cetera. Now, one of the things I really like about Guest Hollow and that Ben likes about it is that there are a variety of books throughout it. There are different formats and styles. You might have a graphic novel here and a denser book here and one based in history and one you know, biography. There are so many different ways that they approach physics and all their sciences that you can really choose what is interesting to your own kiddo. There are a couple of spines, I guess, books that you use most often throughout. One of them is Basher Physics, which is definitely a children's book, and I'll talk on that here in a minute. And then The Way Things Work is another spine that you use throughout. This is by David McCauley, and there are several versions. We had 
the new way things work already because we used it for physics back when <laughs> Elizabeth, I think, was in seventh grade. So it's been a long time that we've had this one and I bought it used then. He, David Macaulay is the one who also wrote Pyramids, Toilets, Cathedral. He's got a fantastic style and he's really, he's really, really good. Let me pause here and say, Guest Hollow as a company is not secular. Their curriculum outside of science, at least high school science, is much harder to adapt, in my opinion, and less neutral. So that is why I don't use any like I don't use their history at all. For science, I have found it very easy to adapt. And so that's why I make the exception and share about them on this channel, even though 99.9% .9 of stuff I share is secular. In this case, the spine that they recommend for their te for the textbook was not secular. It also was not very in-depth, I didn't think. So we swapped their recommended spine, a recommended textbook with OpenStax high school physics. I just went through the OpenStax physics and added the chapters, just swapped similar topics. So whatever text chapter topic they recommended, I found a similar one in OpenStax. The OpenStax physics is definitely a drier. I mean, it is a physics textbook but it is very well done and it does include questions if you want your kiddo to have that experience of that. And that leads me to number two pro is that it is super adaptable. I love that you can really make this curriculum your own. If your kiddo hates the YouTube videos, skip them. If they don't like the hands-on activities, skip them. I think they're good to at least occasionally do, but you don't have to. If you have a kiddo who is a slower reader or dyslexic or has a lot of other reading in other subjects, scale back the amount of reading and only choose the one and two books. It is up to you how you want to do this. And my last pro is that it is math free. So if you have a kiddo who is not STEM bound, or not college bound. This is definitely a great choice. If you do have a kiddo who is STEM college bound and you want to use this, you're just gonna need to add some math to it. And the OpenStax physics textbook is a great way to do that. In addition to it being math free, if your kiddo doesn't need it, the other benefit of that is that traditionally, physics needs to be taken with a student at the time a student is taking either concurrently or has already taken algebra two because of the level of math needed for physics. So if your kiddo, if, you, if you're using a math free program, then you have more adaptability of when you might be able to use this program because you could do it for a ninth grader who's only taking algebra or taking geometry. Now, one of my cons is I found the activities pretty lacking this time. The activities come from junk drawer physics, and this is not a bad book at all. In chemistry and botany, no, I think just botany, they use Janice von Cleve's series, and it's a, a great series, but both that series and this one are not written for the high schooler. And I understand that it gets more difficult to find physics activities for high school that is practical and uses household materials and is math free. I get all that and like able to quickly be done. That said, Ben rarely found the activities to be worth his time. Most of them are very quick. So it's not that there was a lot of time involved which maybe is even more telling that like, he's like, do I really need to do this? Um, and again, I know it's hard to find that balance, especially in a book that's just like, has a bunch of different ideas and whatever. It's fine. It, and if I were using this for a middle school kiddo, I think it would be really good because the activities are easy enough that they could do it on their own 
but you would and you wouldn't need to be involved for the most part um but i didn't love them sometimes like with this book i feel like the books they choose are are too basic are too immature type of things the basher physics was definitely one of those it was supposed to be a spine that you use throughout the year like one definition one or two definitions to go along with whatever the week's topics were been misunderstood i think i don't remember if it was i hadn't made it clear or he just misunderstood or what but he read the whole book in like 15 minutes and then put it in the return pile it is super super basic and that's not the only book like that i and again i get it like some of the picture books that they use are great for just getting like the basic information absolutely and some picture books i think this was the chemistry ones were about different foods as plants and they were really good because yes they were picture books but they were they had a lot of information about them but sometimes i just feel like that there are other choices that could be made the good thing though is that since it's super adaptable we could swap out books as we needed to or skip books entirely if we felt like they weren't worth the effort my other con, and this goes for all of them, is that while you get the plans and that's all laid out for you and it is super adaptable, because of that, it means that you really have to, as the parent, invest a fair amount of time with setup as far as deciding what activities you want to do, looking through the different videos, like the two different series of the same topic, and choosing which one you think is going to be better for your kiddo marking things off the list etc as far as organizing it the adaptability is both a pro and a con because it does mean that there's a lot more setup than what um than what a lot of programs are it is definitely more parent time for setup than some programs we've used for math or science or whatever it is a lot of time but if it's a if guest hollow science is something that works for your kiddo, I think it's absolutely worth it. Especially if you have a kiddo who's, for example, not interested in physics. If they can engage in the physics material and come away learning a lot from it, well, then it's worth it. Of the different guest hollow sciences that Ben has done, the physics ranks third for him. Botany first, chemistry second, and then physics. Part of that, I think, is because botany is a topic that he really enjoys and physics is not. So there's definitely that. I also think that he just enjoyed the books and such better in botany than the physics ones. But that is not to say that we haven't enjoyed, a, that he hasn't enjoyed a lot of the books. This one, again, it's fine. The activities he's done, the ones he chose to do, are fine but there are some that he's really 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 enjoyed like the way things work um light this one was really good there was a similar one called colors that i think i talked about in my january update video that was so fascinating to me i really really enjoyed that one but light, um, there are a bunch of optional books in this one, more so than in the other, in botany and chemistry. And some of them we have, that we've read have been really big hits, like The Physics of Superheroes. <laughs> and this is a dense, long book. It's 400 pages, but it goes over topics like forces in motion, Newton's laws, conservation of energy, all in a way that doesn't lack for the science. They do a really nice job explaining the science of, of 
superheroes. <laughs> I just think it's a, a fascinating approach to the science. And that someone will come up with this book idea is, I don't know, I really like it. There are also, we've got these on hold, um, a couple about Star Wars, I think, Star Trek. I know, that's a, <laughs> one of those faux pas of mixing up. Pretty sure it was Star Wars. So if you have a kiddo who loves to read, doesn't need a math-based physics, like something untraditional, guess how physics may really be a good choice. On the other hand, if you have a kiddo who struggles when they have multiple resources a day or a week, this is going to be a challenge because there are. <laughs> um, when Elizabeth did chemistry in the kitchen, that was something that definitely threw her for a loop. And part of that was also that she was eighth grade and just learning to take on more of that independent learning. But I think even as a high schooler, this would have been tough for her. I do wish that I had known about it. I don't, I don't know if it was available for her. We would have had to scale it back quite a bit to make it work. But I think it's a practical approach that would have made physics more concrete for her. If your kiddo really prefers like a textbook series or a video lesson and then material that goes directly corresponds with it, this is not a good choice for them. There is a workbook that your student completes each week that pertains specifically to books like this. Despite my best intentions, I was not good at keeping up with that this year. What I wish now, and he's finishing it, so it it only occurred to me in the last couple of weeks, <laughs> and I wish I had thought of it sooner, was that we used the workbook questions as discussion instead. I could have easily done all of it orally, looked at the answers as we went, and, and had a good discussion with him from there to better assess what he was learning. As far as will I use it again, I will not be using the physics. I will probably use some of the books as an addition to Matthew's physics, but he is a college bound kiddo, probably STEM bound, and I wanna make sure that he has a really good foundation for it. And he's not a kiddo who would enjoy multiple books like this. If you are ready to take a look inside of Guest Hello Physics, click on the video on your screen. I will see you in the next video.